Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Well, we've learned a lot in a week. Remember I said it'll take us a while to figure stuff out? We're figuring out a lot. So, first of all, this is the map of Omicron. Over 30 countries already infected. It's all over the United States, about a third of the United States. It's even in Houston, some woman who is 40 years old, no travel history, has Omicron. And uh, as reported in the uh, Houston Chronicle, apparently it's in the wastewater too. So uh, it's here in Houston. Of course, we're welcoming for all infectious diseases here in Texas. Uh, and let's, let's talk about South Africa, because that still seems like where most of the problem is. Uh, you know, Shwani is the name of what used to be uh, Pretoria. That's sort of the hot spot. If you look at what is going on in terms of cases, cases are rising pretty dramatically there. And because they are doing a good job of sequencing, they know that mostly it's being driven, as you can see here, by Omicron. So that seems to be the uh, most infectious variant in that part of the country, in that part of the world. The problem is it's largely a, a naive population, a susceptible population. And it, we don't know if it's out-competing Delta or it's just that it's there and spreading fast. So we won't really know about the competition stuff until we look what happens in the United States. One interesting thing is if you look at reinfection, so people who've been vaccinated or have been infected and recovered and look at who gets reinfected, it looks like in South Africa, the Omicron variant is definitely causing more reinfection. So that's kind of suggests that it might be evading the immune system a bit. If the other uh, little bit of concern is if you look at the uh, wave of hospitalizations, Delta was pretty steep, but Omicron seems to be even steeper. So there's a concern that it might be a little bit more severe because it's going, um, it's, it's causing hospitalizations at a, at a more rapid pace. But interestingly enough, ICU admissions are, are not up in South Africa and neither is oxygen consumption. So it's a little bit weird. And then the other positive news is if you look at Delta, huge peak of Delta, and the mortality rate in this curve below here peaked about two weeks later. That's pretty typical. So here's the big peak for Omicron, and there's no change yet in mortality. So that kind of suggests it may not be as severe. We don't know. So what have we learned in the past week? And it's amazing to think about the amount of progress we've made in one week's time. Uh, we know now that it's broadly around the world and it's spread in the United States, as I said, in a third of the United States. So is it more contagious? It looks like it's pretty similar in, uh, in, in uh, being as infectious as the Delta variant. We'll really have to see if it outcompetes uh, Delta in the U.S. If it doesn't, then they're probably equivalent. My guess is that it'll be, I, I don't think it actually will outcompete Delta, but we'll have to see. So is it more virulent? In other words, does it cause more severe disease? Again, it's too early to tell. There's some positive things. The ICU, and, uh, ICU admissions are not going up, but hospital admissions are. Uh, so we'll just, we'll have to see. Uh, the, you know, as I mentioned, mortality doesn't seem to be rising at the, at the moment. Uh, do the vaccines still work? Well, again, it's a little bit too early, but uh, it looks like Omicron is able to reinfect at a higher rate, and that sort of suggested it's evading the immune system. But there's no evidence that in people who are infected after having been vaccinated that they actually get severe disease. And most of the uh, studies so far suggest that the antibodies will neutralize Omicron, even if it's not as effective. That's the reason you need to get vaccinated and boosted. You want to have as high a level of uh, antibodies as you can because it probably will neutralize Omicron. Do the current tests work? In other words, you go to get a PCR or an antigen capture test. Yes, they do. They recognize Omicron. And then, of course, my, my sister, what about travel? I want to go to Europe. I want to get out of here. Uh, travel restrictions? are absolutely going to be of no use. <laughs> you know, I don't understand why we're putting in travel restrictions all over the country, why everyone's doing that. Because frankly, it's all over. It's been around for a while. So there's no hope that travel restrictions now will be helpful. I believe the phrase is that horse is already out of the barn. Uh, so re one really interesting uh, paper in science this week, sort of looking at the evolution of Omicron. So this is a really interesting graph. It's an evolutionary tree, and each of the dots represents, or circles represent, an, a, an, a mutation. And as you can see, the virus tends to mutate very slowly, one nucleotide at a time, and they're all kind of interrelated, except look at Omicron. It's almost like a completely different branch. 
It's like, uh, it's like the weird cousin you never wanted to have come visit your house. It just showed up as Omicron. So, you know, this has got scientists really, you know, debating. So, you know, how can this have happened? How can this be there with so many different mutations? Uh, you know, where's it been hanging out? <laughs> where's it been? Why are we just finding it now? So there's sort of three major uh, hypotheses. The first is that it's been circulating in a population that, you know, is largely unvaccinated and we haven't been testing for it. So it's been there churning away in a population that we just haven't been looking, looking at. So that could be Africa. I mean, we haven't had the kind of detailed studies outside of South Africa. It could be in Southern Africa for a long time, mutating a little bit at a time. I don't think that's what it is, but that's one of the hypotheses. The other is that it stayed in a, a, a human host for a long time. In other words, you know, we're selecting against the virus from changing all the time. And the virus is only in us for a few days before we re begin to generate an immune response. But if it sits in a person for months, it can just, you know, develop all these mutations that don't change anything. Just, it just keeps mutating until it finally is transmitted. Uh, and that, I think, is likely. I think that's, we talked about it last week. Um, the HIV population, immunosuppressed, about, you know, 30% of the HIV patients aren't that well controlled in Africa. And so it is like, I think, a very likely possibility that this evolved in a few people that uh, were immunocompromised and lasted a long time, and then it was transmitted. The third one, which is a really interesting possibility, is that it jumped species. Like we talked about, you know, over the uh, months, we've talked about the species that's been found in, in minks, in white-tailed deer. <laughs> it's, now, it's now in hippos. <laughs> this is my favorite. It's in hippopotami. So it jumped, it could have jumped into another species and replicated there and mutated and then jumped back. So that is the third possibility. And all of these are, you can figure this stuff out. We just do, need to do a lot of sequencing uh, in patients in Africa. We need to do a lot of sequencing in other animal species. We should be able to figure it out, but those are the sort of the, the major things going on with Omicron. Well, what about just old, old plain old COVID-19 pandemic? Who cares about that now we have Omicron? But, you know, Europe's still a mess. Uh, UK's a mess. The, actually, the biggest problem in Europe is Austria. Austria, you can see in, the, in Austria, in the Czech Republic, uh, Switzerland, Hungary, Croatia, and Slovenia are really pretty hot, but Austria has been a real center. Austria just went through another national lockdown. This is their fourth lockdown. Uh, but imagine this, they, their, rate, their case rate was over 1,000 per 100,000. Remember, we talk about being low case rates under 10 cases per 100,000, moderate 10 to 50. They had 1,000 cases per 100,000, which led them to do a complete lockdown. Their lockdown worked. They were able to have the uh, case rate drop from 1,000 to 500, but you know, it's, it's still way too many. So they are implementing a mask mandate throughout the country uh, for any public transportation inside stores, public venues. They have a curfew for restaurants and limiting the number of people. And they have a vaccination rate that's low by Europe standards, 67%, but it's high by our standards. So, but they, they're gonna mandate vaccines for the entire country next year. So that, it'll be interesting to see how they do, uh, you know, relative to the rest of uh, the European countries. In the US, unfortunately, we're having a pretty significant winter spike. I was hoping it wouldn't do that, but it looks like it's doing it. And if you look at the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation projections, I was hoping we would follow this line, which is sort of current, but it looks like we're following this line, which is the worst case scenario. And what is the worst case scenario? Everybody stops using masks. That's kind of what's going on. Mobility returns to pre-pandemic levels. Well, I was traveling around Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's definitely back to pre-pandemic levels. And there are new variants that are highly infectious like Delta and Omicron. So, you know, unfortunately it looks like we're gonna go through this and in which case we won't be out of this uh, peak until mid to late January. Look what happens if everyone just got vaccinated or masks. It just almost goes away. And just as a proof of principle, Japan, look at Japan, it's almost gone. And that was just from universal mask, I mean, just the universal mask mandate. And, and vaccinations, they're over 70% vaccinated. I mean, Japan is, they're up to 77% vaccinated. They're, they're doing what everybody should be doing. <laughs> we don't do that here in America. We do what we wanna do. Don't you forget it. And so what's, where are the hot spots? North. Michigan, Minnesota, New Hampshire, 
you know, even Ohio, they're, they're <laughs> the Ohio State. They're, they're, they're a mess too. And if you look why, I mean, it's not hard to face. The white and blue, that's cold. As it gets cold in the country, you know, people go indoors. And if they're not rigorous about mask wearing or getting vaccinated, it's going to spread. We still have 40% of the country that it's unvaccinated. And I don't know how to, how to say it anymore. <laughs> how can you say it? If you look at your likelihood of getting infected, it's six times higher if you are unvaccinated. And of dying, it's 13 times higher. So I, I don't know. You know, that, that's on an individual basis. Real interesting study. This is a, a, a source from J.P. Morgan, actually, looked at the n county's in, uh, infection number versus vaccination status. And look at this. As you get towards 80% vaccination status, look how, how the infection rate drops dramatically. And look at mortality drops dramatically. So I don't know. People who say it doesn't matter. I mean, whether you look at it on an individual basis or this kind of population data, vaccinations really, really work. They really work. How are we doing in Texas? We're not doing bad. And part, partly we're doing well because we had such a high infection rate before, so a lot of people recovered. But our friends in Dimmick County are doing okay. They're at moderate risk. And, and Harris County is getting to be almost low risk. We're almost, we're almost down to where I'd feel comfortable. In fact, if you look at new cases in uh, the Texas Medical Center, 232 per, per day last, the last seven days. Now, I don't know if that's a problem with Thanksgiving reporting. It might have been. But uh, the hospitalization rate is also down a little bit, so down from 65 to 56 per day. So that kind of suggests we're continuing to trickle down. Whether that will continue to stay unless we get more vaccinations, I don't know, because we're only in the state of Texas, only about 55 percent fully vaccinated. Omicron's here. If, I'm hoping that people will just be scared enough to go get vaccinated because they don't apparently listen to data. Please, just get vaccinated. Anyway, a bunch of shout outs this week. First, I want to do a giant shout out to the Italian man who didn't want to get a COVID shot so badly that he faked a rubber arm. I mean, you don't know stupidity until somebody shows up with a new level of stupidity. So that's, that was the dumbest thing I've ever, and, and I figured he wouldn't get caught. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> the nurse goes, I believe you have a rubber arm there, sir. Anyway, and I also want to do a giant shout out to our, my colleagues uh, in Temple, Texas. Uh, I went to visit our new uh, medical school campus with uh, the chairs there. Uh, we're very excited. It's a Baylor Scott and White campus, and, and the chairs are really excited to have our new regional campus. We're, we're, it was great visiting them. They're doing a great job. Also, I want to give a shout out to our development team. They were awarded uh, a leadership award for fundraising in Alzheimer's uh, by the Alzheimer's Foundation. Uh, also, want a big shout out to Botswana. You know, South Africa gets a lot of, a lot of always in the news for the wrong things. Uh, they were the first country with a high HIV, HIV burden to eliminate mother-to-child transmission. That is a huge, huge uh, step in their public health system. So congratulations, Botswana. And one last thing, the holidays are approaching. Please remember we're in a global pandemic. It's not over yet. I mean, I, my sister's you know, going, like, can't we just forget it? Janet, you can't forget it. You've got to continue to follow public health rules. If you don't know vaccine status of people around you, wear a mask. If you ha want to be with friends, ma mandate that they, that they be vaccinated or leave those people at home. Anyway, just be, you know, a lot of common sense during the holidays. And, uh, you know, we all want to be safe. And it's important for our country. Anyway, uh, I want you to have a really great weekend. And I can't wait to see you next week.